NASA is set to make a major announcement about its first mission to the Sun. The agency wants to send a spacecraft closer to the star than ever before, where it'll face extreme temperatures and radiation levels. Full details will be released on Wednesday. Jonathan Lunin is director at Cornell University's Center for Astrophysics and Planetary Science, and he told us what NASA hopes to achieve. NASA's hoping to find out how the solar wind is actually uh, generated. Uh, we live on our planet Earth immersed in a wind of charged particles coming from the sun. Solar Probe Plus will actually travel to the region where those particles are accelerated uh, by the powerful magnetic field of the sun. And uh, we, we hope to find out how that all happens. Extreme temperatures, high levels of radiation. How close will it actually get to the sun? The closest Solar Probe Plus will get is <clears throat> approximately 7 million kilometers. That's about nine times the radius of the sun. That's incredibly close. Uh, it's a, a place where uh, the spacecraft will get 450 times as much sunlight as we get on the Earth. And the temperature at the front of the shield protecting the spacecraft will be at about uh, 1400 Celsius. So these are really extreme conditions for a spacecraft. Are there any other factors that the uh, designers need to take into account? They do. Uh, in fact, uh, the spacecraft is going to be moving at extreme speed. It's going to be moving at about 200 kilometers per second. And so uh, as it collects and analyzes particles and measures the fields, it's going to be moving through uh, this close region very, very quickly. Uh, the whole mission is one of extremes, but it should be extremely exciting to actually be in the atmosphere of the sun uh, where all of this energy is present and uh, this wind is generated. And the sun, of course, giving us life here on planet Earth is absolutely vital, but will it be looking at other things, other, other stars or anything else around the sun? The, the Solar Probe Plus will pass by Venus seven times. Uh, that's necessary to get enough speed to go in as close as it can to the sun. We, it's a paradoxical thing to think about, but you can't simply fall into the sun. You have to lose all of the Earth's orbital speed to do that. And this is what these flybys of Venus will do. And of course, there will be observations of Venus at that time. But the real star of this show is our star, the sun. And by making these measurements very close to our own sun, not only will we understand how this wind is generated and flares and coronal ejections occur, but we'll also understand better the environment that planets around other stars, planets that orbit very close to their own parent suns, experience. Uh, and briefly, if you would, uh, it seems to be a very tight turnaround they're setting themselves in order to get this thing off the ground. Well, this mission has been under development now for more than five years, and it was conceived of 60 years ago in a National Academy's report in 1958. So the mission is well under development now, and uh, we look forward to a launch in a year. Jonathan Lenin there.